Oh, they're using a rake back there behind the shed. Let's Police in the Barahona backyard building a case. Nobody charged for the murder of 10-year-old Nubia Barahona yet. They left with a couple different garbage bags. James Shepard lives next door to where Victor Barahona and his twin sister Nubia lived. Wednesday night, he is now at his boiling point, saying DCF failed the children. There's a sign out there that says, if you know of child abuse, call, you know, child services. That's the biggest joke there is. Says was wrong at the Barahona home, believing a body was in the backyard just over his fence, possibly Nubia's, long before it was ever found in the back of George Barahona's truck along I-95 decomposing. But there's a distinct smell between sewer and something dead. You know, you ever smelled a dead body on the side of the road? I never knew a little girl even lived there. I've been here 15 years. I never knew they had a little girl there. Family service gets called. They don't do nothing about it, you know. And uh, so you kind of wonder, what, what can you do? I mean. The children's biological father says this woman, Sandra K. Doctor, is their birth mother. But by the time the twins were toddlers, they were in state care, fostered by the Barahonas. Paul Newman served as the children's court-appointed guardian, and records show he opposed the Barahonas' adoption of the twins. A chilling call for help. Two young lives in danger. They're being taped up and with their arms and legs and put in a bathtub. Six early this morning, investigators removing a bathtub from the home of a man accused of abusing and trying to kill his adopted son. The terrifying tip phoned in just days before a young girl was found dead along I-95. A therapist then making a chilling call to a child abuse hotline, but somehow the call wasn't enough to save her young life. Seven Renee Marsh is live outside the Barahona home in southwest Miami-Dade where the bathtub was removed. Renee. Well, Richard, a busy morning out here in front of the Barahona home. As you can see, even at this hour, there are cop cars and yellow crime scene tape surrounding the home. As you mentioned, detectives went into the home early this morning and they came out with their hands full. We have the video. Take a look. Critical evidence hauled out of the Barahona home early this morning, the family bathtub. It's reportedly where the 10-year-old twins were bound with tape at the legs and arms and left to sit for hours. 10-year-old Victor still at Jackson Memorial Hospital after he's found doused with an unknown chemical inside his adopted father's red pickup truck along I-95 in West Palm Beach. The father, George Barahona, unconscious outside the truck and the body of 10 year old Nubia doused with chemicals and decomposing in a bag in the back of the truck. Florida Abuse Hotline, this is Marvina. How can I help you? Now, 7 News has obtained audio of a tip called into a state abuse hotline, warning of abuse three days before this disturbing discovery on February 14th. A therapist made the call. She'd been counseling the biological granddaughter of Carmen Barahona, the twins' adopted mother. The granddaughter, the whistleblower in this alleged abuse case, told the therapist what she saw at Grandma's house. And she's been saying abuse, and she was threatened not to say anything. Has she ever been abused by them? No, she has not. And how are the other children being abused? Um, they are, when they're being punished, they're being taped up, 
and with their arms and legs and put in a bathtub. And they're in there all day and all night. And she undoes their arms when they eat. Caseworker Andrea Flary tried to locate the children after the agency received that call, but she never found the children. Then word came, Nubia was found dead and her brother rushed to the hospital with several burns. Uh, this has been the scene since late last night. Again, this morning, detectives pulling out the bathtub, which is at the center of this investigation, pulling that out of the home. Uh, this morning, later on, that independent review panel will meet again for the second time to review how DCF handled the Barahona case. Thank you.